the sequence of several possible reactions in the same reaction system. Suppose, for example, a substance B is added to a beaker containing A prime and A second of same initial concentration. So we have two possible reactions, B react with A prime or B react with A second according to reaction one, A prime plus B, A prime B. The equilibrium constant is K prime and the reaction to A second plus B give A second B with the equilibrium constant K second. The question is, what is the sequence of these two reactions? Does one start the first, then, then two? This is a possibility. Or does two start the first, then reaction one? This is the second possibility. Or one and two starts at the same time. This is the third possibility. To know the sequence of these two reactions, first of all, we look if these two reactions have the same stoichiometry. The stoichiometry in the first is 1, 1, 1. The stoichiometry in the second is 1, 1, 1. So in this case only, if the stoichiometry of the two reactions are the same, the value of k prime can be compared to the value of k second. And if these two reactions do not have the same stoichiometry, the value of k prime and k second could not be compared to know the sequence. Which of the above reaction is the principle? So that starts first. You know that K prime value is an indication about the advancement of the first. If K prime is high, reaction one is advanced. K second is an indication about the advancement of reaction two. If K second is high, reaction two is advanced. They have the same stoichiometry, one, 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 one. So K prime and K second can be compared to know the sequence of the reaction. If K prime is 1000 times greater than K second, that means the major reaction can be known. Reaction one starts and then reaction two starts. In other, in other meaning, reaction two could not start if reaction one is not at the end. So we treat reaction one separately. We calculate the limiting, the excess, the product formed. Then we transfer this data to reaction two and we start working on reaction two. If K prime is not 1000 time, If K prime is not 1000 times greater than K second. So in this case, we could not know the principal reaction. The two reactions proceed at the same time, but with different advancement, because K prime is different from K second. So what to do? What are the calculations done in this type of, of examples. We work on the global reaction A prime plus A second plus 2B that give A prime B plus A second B and this is our principal reaction. So we calculate K global and all reactions are done on this principal reaction. In the next slide I will treat two examples, 
The first two possible reactions, where k prime is greater 1000 times than k second, and the second example, when k prime is not greater 1000 times than k second. Here two applications about uh, the sequence of the reaction. In the first, we mix one liter in one liter solution, one mole of NH4 plus, one mole of CH3COH, and two moles of OH minus. NH4 plus and CH3COH are acids, and OH minus is a base. So two reactions are possible. The first is between NH4 plus OH minus to give NH3 and H2O, where the equilibrium constant of this reaction is equal to the concentration of the product NH3 divided by NH4 plus and OH minus. So K1 equal Ka of the couple NH4, NH3, divided by kW equal 10 to the power 4.8. And the second reaction is between acetic acid and OH- to give acetate and H2O. By the same way, K2 of this reaction is equal acetate divided by acetic acid times OH- at equilibrium. So K2 equal Ka of the couple CH3COH, CH3COO minus, divided by Kw, so K2 equal 109.3. If we compare, for example, K1 and K2, the two reactions have the same stoichiometry, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, so K1 and K2 can be compared in order to know the sequence of these two reactions. To note that K1 value is very high, so reaction 1 is advanced, and K2 value is very high, also the second reaction is advanced. Comparing K1 and K2, we found that K2 is greater 1,000 times than K1. That means reaction 2 starts and then reaction 1 starts. So we have to work first on reaction 2. CH3COH plus OH minus gives CH3CO minus plus H2O. At T equals 0, we have 1 mole, 2 moles, 0. This reaction tend to infinity since the value of K2 is very high, so this reaction is practically complete. And one mole disappear. From two moles disappear one mole, so we have one mole at T equal infinity, and we have one mole of CH3COO minus. This values should be transferred to reaction one. So we write reaction 1, NH4 plus plus OH minus, that give NH3 plus H2O. At T equals 0, we have NH4 plus. OH minus, we have 1 mole remained from the reaction 2. And NH3 0, at T equal infinity, NH4 plus will disappear completely. OH minus will disappear also completely, and we have formation of one mole of NH3. So in the final solution, we have one mole of NH3, and we have also the one mole from the previous reaction. So we have one mole and one mole. In the application, in the second application, we mix one liter solution containing uh, one mole HCOH, one mole CHCCOH, and two moles OH minus. By the same way, we have two reactions possible, the reaction of the first acid with base and the reaction of the second acid with base. We write the two reactions. We calculate K1 
of the first and K2 of the second. K1 of the first is equal to Ka of the couple divided by Kw equal 10 to the power 10.3 and K2 of the second is equal Ka of the couple acetic acid acetate divided by Kw so K2 equal 10 to the power 9.3 comparing K1 and K2 first of all K1 is very high and K2 is very high so the two reactions are complete can we compare K1 and K2 to know the sequence of these two reaction Yes, since these two reactions have the same stoichiometry. So K1 is not greater than 1000 times than K2. So these two reactions proceed at the same time. We have to work on the global reaction. We write the global reaction CHCCOH plus HCOH plus 2H minus, that gave HCO minus, plus CH3CO minus, plus 2H2O. And we have to calculate K global. If we calculate K global, it's equal to K1 times K2 divided by KW square. So we write the table of conversion at the equal zero. We have one mole, one mole, two mole, zero, zero. And according to the value of K equilibrium, of K global at equilibrium, we can know this reaction will reach infinity or T equilibrium. It depends on the value of K global. If the value of K global is very high, we work on T equal infinity. And if the value of K global is low, we work at T equilibrium. So in these two applications, we studied the sequence of two possible reactions. In the first application, we have two reactions where one starts ends, then the second starts. In the second application, we have two reactions that start at the same time and we work on the global reaction. Donor, acceptor, and couple notation. Consider the reaction A plus B that gives C plus D. Suppose that A give a particle P, release a particle P. So, so this particle P is received by B. When A released the particle P to B, A is transformed to C. And when B received the particle P from A, it's transformed to D. A released the particle P, so A is called donor. B received this particle, so B is called acceptor. A is donor when release the particle P transform to part to C so C become an acceptor and B receive the particle P from A so B acceptor it's a transformed to donor D A and C form a couple and B and D form a couple. The first couple is CA and the second couple is BD. In general, we, we write the couple as acceptor donor. So the acceptor is the first, then we put the donor. But in some chapters, we will see that we can note 
the couple as donor acceptor. Example, in the acid-base reaction, the particle P exchanged is H+. Plus. CH3COH plus NH3, that gives CH3COO minus plus NH4 plus. CH3COH release H plus to NH3. So CH3COH is donor. NH3 receive H plus from CH3COH. So NH3 is acceptor. And when the donor release the particle H plus to an H3, the donor is transformed to the acceptor form, which is CH3 COO minus. And when the acceptor re receive H plus from the donor, so it's transformed from the acceptor form to the donor form. In this reaction, we have two couples, acceptor, donor, which is CH3COO minus CH3COH and NH3 NH4 plus. To note that we write the couples as acceptor, donor, we can write it as donor acceptor. In the redox reaction, for example, Fe2 plus plus cerium 4 plus, that give Fe3 plus plus cerium 3 plus. Fe2 plus is reductant, so it's donor and Cerium 4 plus is oxidant, is acceptor. Fe2 plus minus electron received this electron by cerium 4 plus. When Fe2 plus lose one electron, Fe2 plus minus one electron, it's transformed to Fe3 plus. And cerium 4 plus, when accepting this electron, Cerium 4 plus plus one electron, so it's transformed to cerium 3 plus. Also in this reaction, we have donor plus acceptor that give acceptor plus donor, and we have two couples, Fe3 plus, Fe2 plus, cerium 4 plus, and cerium 3 plus. This is in the redox reaction. In the complexation reaction, we have a metallic ion M that receive a ligand L to give ML. So M accept L and L accept M. So M and L are acceptors. ML is donor of M or ML is donor of L so ML is donor. To note that we will discuss all these details in the chapter of the complexation. The most important is only to know the concept of donor, acceptor, and couple. The couples involved is acceptor donor M ML or acceptor donor L ML. What is the definition of ampholite or amphoteric substance? It's a substance that can play the role of donor and acceptor at the same time. For example, consider these two couples, HSO3, HSO4 minus H2SO4 and SO4 to minus HSO4 minus. In the first, HSO4- minus is acceptor. In the second, couple, NH, HSO4- minus is donor. 
So HSO4 minus can play the role of acceptor or the role of the donor at the same time. So HSO4 minus is called ampholite. Consider the two couples H2O, HCO plus, HO minus, H2O. H2O is acceptor of H plus from H3O plus. H2O is acceptor. In the second couple, H2O is donor. So H2O is acceptor in a couple and donor in another couple. So H2O is ampholite. And we will treat the ampholite in the oxrat also and in the complexation. All will be discussed later in the corresponding chapters. The strength of donor is measured by its capacity to give the particle P. When we call, for example, this acid is stronger than the second acid, that means that the first acid is more donor of H+. And the strength of acceptor is measured by its capacity to accept the particle P. When we have acceptor and donor and we want to predict the reaction, we follow the same procedure. First of all, we determine the couple's acceptor donor involved. We make increasing order of Px and we put the references. In the case of acid base, the references are pKa0 and pKa14. In the case of complex or in the case of redox reactions, the references are different. We will study the nature of these references in the corresponding chapters. Then we determine the species present. If the reaction between the species present is in the direction of gamma, so this reaction is advanced. For example, A1, if you have A1 and D2, the reaction between them is in the direction of gamma, so this reaction is advanced. If the species present give a reaction in the anti-gamma direction, so this reaction is limited. Suppose, for example, you mix D1 and A2, the reaction is possible, but it is in the direction of anti-gamma, so the reaction between D1 and A2 is limited. Then we write the reaction and we calculate the equilibrium constant Kr to know if this reaction or to know the advancement of this reaction is advanced, quantitative, complete, or limited. Suppose in the, in the reaction system you have possible reaction. The principal reaction or the first is that between the strongest acceptor and the strongest donor. And to note that the strongest donor has the maximum capacity to give the particle P and the strongest acceptor has the maximum capacity to receive this particle P. Do not forget, if you have two reactions and you want to compare the sequence of these two reactions, if they have the same stoichiometry, compare the value of Kr. If Kr of the first is 1,000 one times greater than Kr of the second, so the first starts and then the second starts. Suppose the two, reaction, the two reactions do not have the same stoichiometry. So the value of K could not be compared to predict which is the first. In this case, 
the larger gamma reaction is the more advanced.